About one year ago, I picked up Unity and started learning how to develop games. I decided to make this video as a way to document my progress, share my perspective when it comes to learning how to develop games, and to shed some light on the process and what it might be like for other people who are interested in getting started. As a kid, I considered the possibility of becoming a games developer, but it was only my first year of my computing software degree, which is my university's closest degree to computer science, that I was given a real taste of what it might be like. I picked an elective subject called Games Fundamentals, which was my first introduction to the Unity engine and programming in C Sharp. Games Fundamentals was all about creating games, which I thought was great. It also used the Unity engine, which was also great, because up until then I had no experience working with the engine, and I only made games with Game Maker and later in Blender. The big project in Games Fundamentals was to make our own game. So a little bit of thought about design and implementation, I got to work on my first game. Taking some pretty obvious inspiration from other games, this is a concept screenshot that I came up with. A few more ideas, inspirations, and then I started. The game did not turn out how I envisioned it. It was very buggy, it wasn't very fun, and it generally lacked some core mechanics I wanted to add, but I had not given myself enough time to implement. Nevertheless, I had finished and had made my first original project in Unity. I was fascinated with making mobile games because these seem like small projects which can be made by a one-man team and that might eventually allow me to make some money by doing what I enjoy doing, which is making games. I've recently been playing a lot of Pokemon Go, I've also been playing a lot of silly endless clickers on my phone, and so when I saw a meme, I knew how I could marry the two together and make a fun endless clicker based on the meme. I worked on this project pretty steadily for a couple of weeks and then I eventually called it quits. The process of making an endless clicker and the amount of additions I would have to make became a sort of boring drag, and the meme was well and truly dead by this point anyway, since Pokemon Go had come out a significant time ago. The next project I started came back to the premise of my first project, and took what I thought were the enjoyable components of that game, recreated the idea, and made it all with much simpler graphics, which was a good idea since I'm not really much of an artist. After a couple of weeks work, this is what I came up with. I had some pretty lofty ideas to add some skins, include some form of monetization, and put it on the Android App Store. However, after realizing the game was probably not that much fun to begin with, I scrapped the idea and I moved on. I spent a brief amount of time messing around with other ideas, like this clearly heavily inspired growing game I called Dots, and a couple of other non-start projects. At this point though, my motivation sort of started to dwindle. I began to focus more on other parts of my life, like my university and my social events. My inspiration returned though when I was given the opportunity to travel to America with my university. Among other things, we were given the chance to go to PAX West and work with a game studio exhibiting one of their games. This gave me my first taste of what it might be like to actually work in the industry. It was an incredible experience and I was inspired. I thought that even if I graduate and work in an entirely different area to games, I will always try to create games in my hobby and that one day I will show off a game at an event like PAX West. When I returned to Australia, I began working on a number of projects that were all a little bit out of my reach. I tried to start a game for the Nintendo Switch, which without the Nintendo Switch API became too difficult to continue, and I tried to start a game that had a narrative-driven story. Uh, these, all, these were all a little too lofty for me to complete, so I eventually gave them up, and my motivation started to dwindle yet again. Luckily, the opportunity was given to me by one of the companies I had worked for in America when we'd been at PAX West, this time, allowing me to go to PAX Australia and work exhibiting one of their games there. PAX Australia was an awesome event. I met so many people who inspired me and learned a lot of things about the industry. When I finished the event, I headed home inspired to make something which might impress someone in the industry and eventually perhaps help me get a job. My first thought was to challenge myself to recreate other people's games. I thought if I knew exactly what the end product should look like and I gave myself a limited time frame that I would be forced to create a project from start to finish. I would learn something in the process and I might impress someone with the end result. My first attempt at this was one more line and the end product was not too bad. It was a very frustrating 8 hours and the end result was far from perfect with a fairly clunky gameplay feeling when compared to the real thing but nevertheless I would started and finished a project. I uploaded my video and I was lucky enough that a few people watched it. It didn't make the impression I might have hoped it would make, but I realized when watching back through it, it was probably fairly boring, and it was also more self-serving than actually helpful for anyone. So with that in mind, I set out to make my first tutorial. Alrighty, so 
I kept my tutorial as simple as possible because I quickly learned that the confidence in speaking required was a little higher than what I was capable of, and putting too much content in the video also made it extremely boring to watch back over. Regardless, when I completed the video, I uploaded it and I was happy with the positive feedback I received and that people had found my video useful. After that video, I went to Japan for a month because at this point, I was in my school holiday. When I returned, I challenged myself again to copy another game called Colorbum 3D, which was a popular mobile game. This time in the hopes that afterwards I could create a tutorial for it and I could put it on YouTube. Unfortunately, the size of the tutorial that would be required and that other people had started to make similar videos made me decide not to create this tutorial. I instead decided to make a simpler tutorial on a grappling hook mechanic, which I've started but I haven't finished yet. In the meantime, however, I went back to working on personal projects. My personal project right now is a game called Beat Quest, which is a mix between a dungeon crawler and a, a rhythm game. I'm really excited about it and I'm working on it with a close friend. I'm constantly impressed by the kind of work that my friends can produce and it's really great doing a project where I'm involving another person. Things that I've learned over the last year is that it can be really hard to finish projects. There's been times where I've either decided the project isn't fun or the project has become too unorganized to continue. Either way, I think I have a bad habit of not completing my work. I think it's a good idea to try to work on projects that you are passionate about rather than projects that you think will impress people because you'll be more likely to keep going with something you enjoy and you will learn a lot in the process. Lastly, in regards to the first point, it's really good to have a clear end point in mind when you start a project. If you don't know exactly what a project should look like when it's finished, you'll never finish the project. I hope this video has been an interesting insight into at least one person's experience at learning how to make games. While I'm sure it's completely different to other people's perspective, I hope I can continue to make tutorial content that people will find useful, and I hope that I can eventually finish a project which is good enough to put in front of people, and that I can be proud enough to publish and people will enjoy. If you have any questions about my experience developing games, or if you want any help with getting started, just let me know, um, I'll do my best. Thanks very much for watching, and I think that's it.